at the length it will be very useful. It's not perfect. Sometimes you cannot make a connection. Sometimes you have a weak signal or a poor ISP, very low uh, internet connection speed. I call that poor echolink band conditions. <laughs> okay, so nothing is perfect, okay? So how does it work? We have two basic operating uh, modes, the uh, single user and the sysop. Started off with the single user was a PC to PC. The world has grown. They've adapted. Uh, some people have been very clever. You can run this on Mac. You can run it on a cell phone, Android or iPhone. You can run it on a tablet, Android format or whatever. Uh, when you interface the radio to the computer, you can have, uh, for example, in my area, we have a 440 repeater connected to our Echolink. We have neighbors down the street sitting in their backyard with an HD talking around the world on five lots. Okay, I know some of you hardcore CWDXers can do this with one watt or less. Okay, congratulations, good on you. Uh, but I have back a link in my small little HDs, I'm happy. And this is the nice thing about ham radio. It's diverse. There's room for everyone. Okay? No one ham is better or not as good as any other ham. We're all hams. With Sysop, you have two choices. A simplex link or a repeater. And basically, all you need for a Sysop link is one radio, and you're going to be operating simplex, you transmit receive on the same uh, frequency. And again, the neat thing is you extend the, uh, the range of your station uh, because anyone in simplex range can be on their HT or, or mobile, get into your station and go around the world. With a repeater, it gets a little more expensive, but I think as hands you all understand that. Right? <laughs> There's no limit as to how much you can spend. Uh, with a repeater, basically you're setting up two radios using two frequencies, one for input, one for output, just like a standard repeater. Uh, I'm lucky, I have an Elmer who has a lot of leftover equipment, and so he has made very clear to me, I'm lending you this duplexer. <laughs> I need to have it back sometime, okay? Uh, duplexers are very expensive. But there are alternatives to operating a repeater using split, split repeater operation by horizontal separation of transmit and receive antennas, or vertical separation by stacking them. But we won't get into all those technical details uh, today. Repeater uh, duplexes are very expensive. And what most people forget is kind of like young people buying their first car. They're so excited to have the car, they forget how much more money it costs to maintain the car for the life that you expect to drive it. The same thing happens with repeater uh, duplexes. It's a big accomplishment to finally get the money to buy one, and then when you need to tune it, you need to find someone with special equipment, and it costs, uh, in the US, it costs us about $125 to $250 to tune uh, a duplexer. So we try to avoid that. Okay, so basically another option for uh, using, uh, setting up an Echolink repeater or any repeater uh, without the duplexer is to do cross-band repeating. I don't know if this is legal in, uh, in India, but it's very simple to do in the United States. In fact, after being here uh, and looking at the situation, I am surprised at how easy it is to be a ham in the US. You get one license, it's good for 10 years, you renew it, it costs you nothing. You just have to make sure that you receive the renewal notice at the address. So if you move, you better tell them, okay? If you want to take a picnic and take your radio, go on a hike, go down to the beach, just pick it up and go. Don't need to file any, any kind of special permission. To do cross-band repeating, you need a dual-band radio with cross-banding capability. And all that means is 
you find an open frequency for input, another frequency for output, but you're operating in two different bands. So we have one split repeater that uh, input is uh, two meters and the output is on 220. And you no, no du uh, duplex is needed. However, anyone using this repeater needs to buy a dual band uh, radio, which costs a little bit more. So there's always a plus and minus to that. <clears throat> Very simply, and uh, without getting too technical, with a split band uh, split uh, repeater, you just have to separate the transmit and the receive antenna so they don't desense each other. You can do a horizontal separation, in which case uh, one, a minimum of about one mile seems to be very useful. Uh, my Elmer is about eight miles away from my QTH, and uh, he has a two-meter transmitter and a 220 transmitter at my location. He has the receivers at his location. He has a third repeater site, which is using a vertical split, and basically I think uh, he has this one running, I believe, on uh, 440. And he's found that when he separates the receive antenna at the very top of the mast, uh, the tip of the transmit antenna must be 20 feet vertically separated. But they must be vertically aligned. They must be directly under one another so they don't see each other. And he's been running this uh, external setup for about three months, and it seems to be working fine. And both of those methods allow you to have repeaters with no duplexer. So it might be something you're interested in. So basically, here's an example of a crossband repeater. Uh, the transmit is on 145, and uh, the receive on, on the crossband is on 445. Again, the main thing you have to do is make sure that people that are operating are have dual band uh, radios which costs a little bit more. Simplex versus repeater. For some people, it really doesn't matter, but uh, I think when it really comes down to it, the key difference, when you're on simplex, one operator is out of range of the other operator. They cannot make contact. They both are in range of your echo link, link node, simplex. So the control operator at the link station can hear both of the operators and has to relay the information. It's a little bit slower, but again, in an emergency, any and all means of communication is viable. The advantage of having the internet is that the call locally can now reach the world. And you never know who is listening. And most hands, when they hear an emergency call, will try to respond. It's just a universal thing about the others. Very big part of the With a repeater, the advantage is that both of the uh, operators that are normally out of range of each other can now talk to each other. The beauty of having the internet connected is now there could be operators in the area on their cell phone who would not normally be able to talk to a person on the radio. But connected by Echolink, all, all of these people can now hear each other. So what does it take to set up uh, Echolink for MCOM? Well, we have a single user, and you can very quickly see everyone needs to have uh, the internet. And this is the weak point. Okay? It is the Achilles heel of Echolink. You need to have an ISP. The equipment is basically, uh, for all the stations we set up, a computer with a sound card interface. The cost starts very low as a single user and increases as you go towards a repeater. The complexity also increases. Okay? The range, basically, with the internet, you're out uh, getting to the world. With simplex, it's up to your particular station, the terrain, all these other factors that affect your propagation. If you lose internet, you still have your radios. And at this point, it's ham radio. And so many of the critics of Echolink do not look at the SysOp uh, operating mode. 
they're totally unaware of them. Because they get to the first point of, oh, echo link, computer to computer. No, it's not hand radio. They close their minds. Okay? But if you change scale and look at it, you find out that once you have a radio connected to your computer, you're a ham. And what we do in, uh, in our area is we link our Echolink repeater station to other Echolink stations within our app range. So if one station loses their internet connection, maybe the other stations are still connected. You just relay the traffic by RF. It's, it's AMP radio. Right? It's basic communication. The most vulnerable station is the single computer user. And that's why for increasing resilience and increasing your, uh, the use of your station for MCOM, you interface it to a radio. This can be interfaced to VHF, UHF, or HF. Okay, so it's, it's your choice. Loss of the internet, that's the weak point. But it's very, very interesting because you cannot assume that a disaster will automatically mean there's no internet. We've had some disasters, and for some reason, the internet was working, and we took advantage of it. Okay. You need to take appropriate step, uh, steps to make your station more resilient, and number one is backup power. Now, every good ham knows they have to be prepared to have backup battery power for an emergency. The added difference is that with Echolink, you need to have the battery backup for the computer, the router, and the modem. Those are things that are in your station. You have the ability to control what happens. Outside your station, you have no idea if the internet will be there. But in some cases, it is. Loss of power, no internet, so just get the backup power going that way. Unfortunately, it's a fact of life, when you go from DC, 12 volt DC, on up to uh, you know what you need for running, uh, in, in the US we need 120 VAC, I think in here you need 220. Okay. The conversion is very inefficient. I think uh, the most uh, optimistic uh, numbers that I've seen is you lose about 60% of your battery power in the conversion. So you have to be very, very conscious of this. Uh, and we have limits. When our batteries that are uh, the backup bank for the router go down to, uh, if we've just used the top 20%, it's now the 80% charge, we stop. We want to protect the life of our batteries. We are willing to go down to 60 in an emergency. But I live in a very small apartment, so I don't have places for a generator, big solar panels, and this sort of thing. But every ham has to face the reality of what they can do and operate within those limits. It's the same like your family budget. You cannot spend more money than you earn. And with power on your station, you need to try to think, how can I uh, keep things going for 72 hours? 72 hours is not a magic number. Uh, it's a number that many MCOM operators, uh, after looking at a number of disasters, the average is help usually arrives within 72 hours. There are exceptions where it takes longer. There are exceptions where it happens sooner. But uh, uh, my organization has chosen 72 hours as, as the guideline. And these are guidelines. You adapt them to yourself. We need to back up power for the internet. That's kind of obvious. Uh, keep the routers, the computers going. Hurricane Harvey, how many people followed that one? Big flood. The storm did not really hit the city. Okay, heavy rains did. So they were lucky. They didn't have high winds taking down power lines and, and towers and things like this. They found after the fact that the main internet backbone was very resilient and was back up and running very quickly. Facebook saved Houston. I don't know if you've heard the story. There is a lady who was addicted to Facebook. And after Harvey hit, she started noticing on Facebook help 
if we need help, we're here, we're stuck in this building. Other people think I have a boat, I can help, or do you need me to go? She started to connect them on Facebook. Then she found she was up for two and a half days. And after the event, she said, I never thought my Facebook addiction would become useful. Okay? So in this case, the internet was up. Zello was also being used, as well as Echolite and VHF, UHF, and HF. Okay? But it all depends on what you have available to you. Data network links. Uh, all Echolink users on cell phones and tablets or with cellular data signals have access to the uh, to Echolink. Unfortunately, they can contact computer users. Computer users cannot usually contact them. Okay? You need to be aware of this when you organize your, your income. Things. So what we like to do is have different Echolink uh, link stations and repeaters all within RF range of each other to form a network. And I think this adds to the resilience for our, uh, for our efforts. Having this type of uh, internet connection connectivity with Echolink stations is very similar to radio relay. And as long as you're within RF range of another Echolink station, if echo, uh, internet goes down, you can still communicate. At some point in time, you keep relaying until we get to a station with the internet, and I guarantee once that happens, the word spreads around the world in, in microseconds. Okay? Interfacing the radio to the computer becomes very tricky. Uh, the key thing is you have a computer, which is a digital device, you have a radio, which is an analog device, and you need something to translate. That's the sound card interface. And unfortunately, every computer maker in the world thinks they have a better way to make a computer, and every radio manufacturer thinks they have the best way to make a radio. And so you have a lot of interface wiring challenges. Okay? But myself and some other hams outside of India, when we talk with Indian hams, we are totally amazed at the home brewing that you do. In fact, I've had many hams in other countries tell me the Indian hams are real hams. Okay, the tough conditions that you're in, the tough conditions that you're in, the expense of this hobby for you relative to your economy, it makes a lot of people think very hard and very clever to home brew things, which work because it gets out to the world. So I really salute the hams here. Okay, connecting by sysop mode again. Once you have a radio connected to your computer, you're like a ham. Okay, internet goes down, radios take over. Add to that cell phone technology. Now, hams with Echolink on a cell phone get to a cell tower and cell power gets to the internet the internet comes to the computer once your call reaches my station it goes out RF local for 25 months the person sitting out there on their HT has no idea that you're calling with a cell phone that it's going by computer or whatever okay as far as they're concerned they're getting a radio signal So basically, with the West Bengal Radio Club, we contact with them, and this is how the world works. You never know who will know someone who knows someone. Okay, uh, I was doing some research about MCOM during the Nepal earthquake, trying to figure out how things actually happen. And I came across an article that reported um, volunteers from the West Bengal uh, Radio Club going to Nepal and setting up operations. And I saw the call sign BU2JFA. And as a teacher, when I looked up this call sign, I saw the club was affiliated with a school. And as a teacher, I'm thinking, oh, fantastic, young people, okay? Let's make contact because 
students usually cannot afford radios. Let's see if they're interested in using Echolink. And let's see if they're using, willing to use Echolink as a way to introduce and get people on the air, making contacts and getting excited because young people can do that. Okay? And this would be a good thing. So I sent an email to uh, JFA and said, this is who we are, we're a small club. Uh, do you have Echolink? Are you interested in getting Echolink? And we can use it this way. And we had our repeater set up. And what's really amazing to me about America, we have lots of hands, we have lots of equipment, we have lots of radios, we have many, many repeaters in the Los Angeles area. And when you listen to these repeaters, they're very, very busy in the morning when people are driving to work, and they're very, very busy in the late evening when people are driving home from work, and it's almost dead quiet all the other times. And so, uh, Mike Elmer and I were uh, concerned about generating traffic on our frequency to make use of it, because basically, it's just like anything else. If you don't use it, you lose it. Okay. And spectrum defense is a, is a critical function in almost any country for any year. So making contact with the West Bend Golf Club was very interesting because so many other clubs we talked to in the U.S. are not interested. And they responded very positively. So we gave them open access to our repeaters, especially for emergency, but also for training purposes. Because it's one thing to sit in the class and be told, this is the protocol for operating, and you talk like this, and you can try to simulate that by talking to each other. But it's very, very different when you actually have to key the mic. Okay. So they took this in hand. And so all of a sudden, we started getting more traffic. People on radios and radio range of their station could get onto their link nodes, it's connected to the internet. Uh, internet comes out at KM6 EON, which is the station uh, for my club, and also my Elmer and 6 WZK. Our stations in LA are connected both by Echolink and RM. Okay. And now with cell phone technology, some of the West Bend Bell hams are up and about in their cell phones getting in and getting across the world. So basically, it, uh, anything in simplex range, and, you know, it, it's, it's very, very obvious. Station one and two can get into the base station. Station three is just out of range. Station two can relay to station three, okay? But once everything comes to their, their club station, they go over the internet and get up to the rest of the world. So this is the interoperability and the uh, exchange that we have using this. Just remember, cell phones and tablets cannot be reached by the computer operator. <coughs> they, once they connect, they're in the network. But I cannot reach a cell phone operator. So when you set up your MCOM team, so the backup, and they have their cell phones, they need to be aware. They have to initiate the contact to get connected to hear everyone else. So this is how the uh, exchange usually goes. Obviously, for communications, you need to have someone sending the message, and hopefully someone is going to receive it. I think many of you have done this before. CQ, 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 dead silence. No one comes back. Okay? Uh, the contact comes back, and then you have communication going. And it has to be clear and accurate. <coughs> especially for MCOM. You may only have one time to get the message out. You must be able to speak clearly and accurately. Okay? This is where a number of things comes about. English language is uh, a global thing. Okay? Morse code is a nice standard. Unfortunately, many countries have taken Morse code off the requirement. I think it was a big mistake. I myself, I'll be honest, I don't know Morse code, but deep in my heart, I know in a disaster, you need one ham to crawl out of the dust and the bricks, look around, see a disabled car, pull the battery, 
find some wire, building up, and they can just be tapping wires and getting code out. <coughs> this is the ultimate resilient hemp compound. So I need to study Morse code. <laughs> and some of you know this much better than I do. From here, I'd like uh, to introduce uh, uh, BU2 JFA. And but you continue need to paint your handy because uh, uh, number of times uh, what happens uh, you will be started with the half image okay because uh, uh, your location will be not specific and uh, uh, transmission has already been started and thereafter it will enter into your footprint or uh, you will be entered into that footprint so number of times uh, we can uh, receive only half image okay so it's uh, but natural uh, it's very uh, natural and uh, if you continue to receive that file there are possibilities that in the same same pass you get multiple of uh, images uh, in pd180 mode the full image will be uh, captured or received in a 180 seconds. One uh, last uh, one or two last two passes were transmitted on PD 120 mode, which generally which generally needs two minutes only. Okay, after successfully receiving these uh, signals. What you need to do, you just need to decode it with a PC software as we said, MMSSTV or Robot 360 application. I am majority I am using uh, my uh, phone, my Android based application only. But whenever I am in my ready shape, I also always try to use uh, MMSSTV. Hopefully, hopefully you will get a decent picture from ISS. So these are some pictures and awards uh, we are getting from ISS. Uh, as I said before, my uh, daughter is also a good ham and uh, is uh, learning the things, hemming. And she, is also, uh, she also got opportunity once and uh, tried to uh, grab the picture from ISS. Her call is VU3EXP, very similar to mine. These are some awards I, I received from our Arish, ARISS Amateur Radio on International Space Station. These are the actual awards. Basic uh, telescopic antenna, 
but you for a decent uh, images or for a decent data uh, i need to say that you must need a directional or some good uh, color, uh, circular color, polarized antenna for this uh, experiment and uh, for if you are uh, using pc you need uh, some uh, special software hdsr or hdsr or any similar programs you, you can also do a uh, few uh, exciting things with the help of artificial listener. You can also listen to aircraft uh, ATC conversations, listening to UHF, UHF, amateur radio bands, recording ham radio APS packets, receiving raw weather satellite images, listening to satellites and ISS. Also, you can uh, do some radio astronomy, monitoring metro status, etc. with the help of artificial listener. So there is number of opportunity you, you can do with this simple basic journal, so which cost around 35 dollars. So uh, possibilities are endless. The ideal journal is basically for SWLs who do not have uh, any license. So this was the simple thing I need to share with you, friends. This is not very complicated, but the basic thing I uh, shared with you. And uh, many experts are here who are already, already knowing this thing and uh, doing this practice things a lot. This is the URL, rtl-str.com. You can find more details on this uh, URL. Okay, thank you very much. And I also thanks to Mikin and uh, Insight India to give opportunity to uh, give me this slot. And uh, along with me, there is my good friend. He has already done many. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, okay, Papa, uh, a PMU. Okay, fine. Papa, my uniform is along with me, and uh, he will sell some few his experiment. Okay. Before that, uh, number of people have not seen how SSTV works. So for the first time, we are make a live demo. Uh, uh, we are going to make a live demonstration of SSTV. What we will do? Uh, in this, uh, we will set up two stations, okay? For two VHF stations, I have two handies with me. I will try to capture one image. Anyone can come forward. I will capture a photo of him. I will uh, decode his, uh, uh, that photo uh, and transmit with uh, this handy. It will be transmitted uh, to other handy and uh, we can share. Uh, we can uh, see how actual SSTV works. Okay, it will be projected on the screen. So we are going to, it will take uh, hardly 10 minutes. So please uh, give me two minutes to set up my uh, two stations, please. Uh, okay, before that, uh, any queries? Uh, any queries? Um, so we can sort out. Frequencies? Yeah, frequency is a big satellite, so where do you recommend to convert into the... Fort Nova, okay, Fort Nova weather satellite, what is the limitation? Uh, it's at uh, 40 kilohertz bandwidth. Okay, generally our, uh, our handy provides only 25 kilohertz bandwidth, so you must uh, try out with uh, RTL left here. Okay, this is uh, some limitation, I think so. Let you can explain it much better. Frequency is around 137 megahertz. And uh, I think the software is WXSAT or something like that, I don't remember. But as uh, Rajesh told, the bandwidth is a major thing, right? You will not get a very sharp picture if you use your regular our videos. So the best thing is to use the SDR because you get the broader bandwidth. And SDR with the Yagi? Not required. You can use a very simple antenna. Uh, of course, if it's tuned to 137, it is much better. But uh, not, uh, you don't need a because the signals are very strong. Rajesh, yeah. you told about this uh, record and then playback to yes. the decode. Yeah. Are there any software which will do it live? You can live it. Yes. You, you need to say live decoding of satellite image. Uh, I said we have two options. We have two options. Either you can uh, live decode. Okay. Yeah, which are like the same software? 
No, no, no. Just I said that uh, you can record the audio clips, audio files in a, a phone or any a digital recorder. Okay. After recording the files, you can process. Yeah, I understood that, but is there anything known as live live decoding? Same yeah. software. Okay, same software. Same software. Hi, ah, yes. Same software. How many of them are working on Linux? And also, of course, you can also try out uh, Roll 36 for live recording also. Okay. If you place the smartphone near your speaker, it, uh, the live record, uh, it will live record. Right? But it is better, it is better to record first and then record. Yeah, yeah, in MMS software is more than enough. Like pretty good software. Yes, sir. Like for Linux, uh, one software is good. For Linux, it's uh, much better. No, no. MMS is good, but for Linux, it's not available. Many are available. Many are. You can Google it. Ha, yeah. Just we are going to try out the things. Okay. 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 But uh, yeah, sir. P A system. No, no. Jada. Okay, fine. Yeah. So I will take uh, capture his photo. I will uh, let you know other steps.
Okay, friends, uh, it was a simple uh, experiment. Uh, we have did here, nothing special, but you can try out. And uh, for uh, beginners, it will be very fun to enjoy. And uh, uh, to getting in, uh, such an image from International Space Station is a proud or memorable, memorable thing for many, including me. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, if you have any case, we are out And uh, one more friend will give from 5 to 10, I will uh, we have. He is learning from ex uh, his experience. Please. View to view to PMU. View three PMU. Please. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is uh, Pankaj Jani, Victor United Team of my unit from Bombay. Uh, being a headquarter officer with civil defense, uh, providing uh, and. Uh, Organizing uh, disaster operations around Maharashtra, Gujarat, as well as Nepal and Kathmandu, and took part in many disasters like Latur, Gujarat, and I was uh, got an opportunity to work with the disaster people, and I am very happy that uh, all hands are working round the clock during the disaster operations. The Maharashtra government has. Uh, uh, elected me as a Mansavi Adhikari, that is headquarter officer, and working for last more than uh, 25 years with civil defense, and also working with Mumbai Police as a wireless officer uh, in event of any disasters and any many social activities like Ganpati Emergent, Mount Mary, and when there is any emergency like cloud burst and all. So I am very happy with uh, amateur radio operations and in Rajkot 2017 I heard uh, space communication from Mr. Rajesh Wagadia view to XP and I got many uh, feedback about the uh, uh, SSTV and luckily from uh, 2016 and 2017 I got 13 SSTV uh, pictures, very clear pictures, and I have been awarded SSTV, that is 20th anniversary awards. And, and I was so happy with my awards that this is my lifetime achievement awards from the Addis, that is a 20th anniversary. And uh, I got many feedback from Rajesh Wagadia from the Hamfest 2000. 40, and then after I have made my home brewed uh, satellite antenna. Like that, if you see that quarter wave is more than enough to catch the signals. But I have made an antenna with the uh, three motion like directions, elevations, and polarizations. I show you some of the thing. location and uh, this is very uh, good opportunity to take uh, ISS uh, signals from the space stations and uh, uh, I think uh, everybody can able to uh, get it uh, very clearly and uh, I really thanks Mr. Rajesh that lots of feedback received because he's having lots of experience and on the end uh, you know amateur radio is a self-learning self-learning experience so i think this can be uh, understood by everybody This antenna is all uh, stand with, uh, I used the protector as well as the magnetic compass to have the uh, exact uh, elevation as well as the directions of that particular ISS or any of the satellite. I have been trying to know 1915 and many uh, satellites uh, using uh, 137 MHz LNA with SDR, RTL also. And okay, so 
So I think that uh, particular uh, subject is, uh, I think I am going to end with this uh, thing. Uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye.